Four years after the end of the Great Mongol War, new challenges are blossoming on Earth. Is a sinister force working behind the scenes to disrupt Earth's fragile peace and tear the Defenders of the Earth apart without anyone realizing it? Let's find out in our review of Defenders of the Earth number one from Mad Cave Studios. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Defenders of the Earth number one. Without spoiling the review too much, just going to say right off the bat, Defenders of the Earth number one has, uh, let's say, potential. When you round up a collection of the world's greatest pulp action heroes for a new adventure, what's not to love? However, this first issue doesn't quite live up to that potential, so we're left feeling, eh, I would say, at least ambivalent after turning the last page. So let's dig in. Defenders of the Earth number one begins with a brief prologue depicting the events of the last day of Earth's war with Mongo. Fighting side by side, Mandrake the Magician and the Phantom believe they are about to meet a bitter end when they're surrounded by robotic soldiers on all sides. Without warning, Mongo's onslaught of mechanized soldiers falls silent, and Flash Gordon appears from the smoke and the mist with the severed head of Ming the Merciless to declare victory over Mongo. Nothing gets the blood pumping with a new issue in a new series like dropping into the middle of a heated battle with characters you know and love, right at the moment when all hope is lost. That's what writer Dan Didio does here by launching the adventure with an energetic and memorable action scene. If you're going to start off the issue, start it off right. This is the way to do it. The issue then shifts to four years later. Now we're at 2024. The Earth is rebuilding much faster than anyone had hoped. They thought it was going to take 20 years. It's getting closer to five. We catch up with the character that we follow most in this issue, Rick Gordon, who is Flash Gordon's son, entering the city and the Defenders of Earth headquarters to share a meal with his father on the date that commemorates the anniversary of his mother's death, Dale Arden. Sadly, Rick finds trouble developing in the city as security details are rounding up homeless people, sort of, maybe. Rick's unfettered access to the Defenders of Earth headquarters has been revoked due to security concerns and just overall administrative hiccups, and his father appears to be too swept up in the rigors of being a public spokesperson to really make time for his friends and his son, which gives everybody a little bit of reason to be concerned. Well, 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 looks like we got trouble in paradise. Dan Didio uses Rick Gordon as the reader's avatar to notice all the little things that are wrong with life after the war. You get these small nuances that only Rick would catch because they're not obvious to the outside reader who hasn't been in that city for long. Noticing those little, little hints heighten the atmosphere of suspicion that something kind of stinks. Unfortunately, new readers get thrown into the deep end of Defender's lore with sprinklings about past relationships, past happenings, all the ins and outs of the side characters. And in short, the emotional impact of those tensions won't make a lot of sense unless you know all the side characters and are really intricately aware of and are familiar with the Defenders of the Earth cartoon from 1986. Elsewhere, we catch up with Lothar and his son LJ as they continue to pack in preparation for their move back to the Seven Nations to address a growing schism. Despite Lothar's efforts to convince Mandrake the Magician to join them, he refuses for now, opting to resume his life's work as a performer because that's what he was meant to do and that's sort of where he wants to go. The Phantom shows up a little bit later and he feels that call to return to Africa, but his injuries that he sustained in the prologue from the beginning of the issue prevent him from traveling just now. So what we see is little bips and bobs of the suggestions that the team is now splitting up and going their separate ways across the globe. So here, what we see is that Dan Didio is heaping trouble on top of trouble with the hints that the Seven Nations are in turmoil and the Defenders are going their separate ways. Without pointing to a specific problem or root cause, the growing pile of little problems gives you the impression of a dark presence working behind the scenes. Especially when so much of the Earth's accelerated reconstruction is due to Ming's son, Crotan, who should immediately give you cause for concern. And then there's a third act, which we won't spoil here because it is a pivotal scene. But all we'll say is that the issue concludes with the appearance of a mother's love in a very strange way. A shocking rumor involving the Phantom that he absolutely did not expect. And the dangers of sibling rivalry. That's a tease, but you gotta really read the issue to know for sure. Overall, Dan Didio delivers all the pieces needed to show readers that at least one threat is working to disrupt Earth's fragile peace. Is it enough? Well, it's kind of a wait and see at this point. The nature of the threat, at least what we think might be a threat, isn't particularly clear since some of the problems could be just chalked up to run-of-the-mill bureaucracy. 
and new readers may find themselves struggling to jump on with the plethora of new characters that are present here that they may not be familiar with. Let's switch gears and talk about the art a little bit. Dan Didio's script is generally solid, or at least okay, barring the down points that we've already talked about, but the main weak point of this issue is the art. To be clear up front, we've seen much worse art from other comic creators and publishers, even from the big two, but the art here lacks detail, lacks precision, lacks refinement, particularly with the coloring application. So what do we mean by a lack of refinement? The lines, particularly the inks, have a squiggly look to them that regardless of the, whether it's a wide shot or a close up, it just looks sketchy. And the color feathering for highlights and contours is practically non-existent. You can tell the colors were applied digitally with a brush size that's much too big for the required details. So it looks, to be blunt, it looks a little sloppy. Let's take a step back and look at the big picture. Where does Defenders of the Earth number one fit in continuity and in the timelines of these characters and this team? It is a, I guess what you would call a sequel or continuation of the 1986 cartoon. To get into the story, this issue relies heavily on the background knowledge of the main characters, their side characters, their history together, and their relationships. Odds are you'll have at least a passing familiarity with, say, the Phantom or Flash Gordon. That one's pretty easy, but are you familiar with Rick Gordon or LJ or some of the other side characters? Well, that might be tough. So if you haven't seen the cartoon, you're definitely going to struggle a little bit with this issue. Final thoughts. What do we think about Defenders of the Earth number one? It's a solid piece of pulp entertainment that picks up from the events of the 1986 cartoon to foreshadow a growing threat to Earth behind the scenes. Maybe. Dan Didio's script accurately captures the voices of the characters, that's well done, and you build a palpable sense of unease concerning the possibility of a conspiracy of some sort, maybe. That said, the issue relies too heavily on intricate knowledge of the 86 cartoon, so if you've never seen it, you're going to be lost in a few spots, and that might turn off new readers. Plus, the art, just to be blunt, is subpar. Therefore, Defenders of the Earth number 1 earns a 6 out of 10. I'd be lying if I didn't say I was yeah, at least a little disappointed with this first issue due to the lack of clear punch in the script and the weak art. But that's our opinion. What do you think? Were you looking forward to the Defenders of the Earth as much as the standalone Flash Gordon series, which we liked a lot? Give us a thumbs up if you are and leave us a comment below with which pulp action hero you'd like to see return next. My money's on Doc Savage if somebody can dig that one up. Also remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.